There is definitely a difference between a pen full of rams and a pen full of ewes. Hey everybody, good morning. Got a few clouds, so I thought this is gonna be a really good time to do this before it gets up to 100 degrees the way it has been lately. A few weeks ago, I had somebody ask if I could do a video discussing some of the things that are different about working with a pen full of rams than a pen full of ewes. Now, right up front, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not the person with the greatest amount of experience in dealing with a lot of mature rams or even rams of this age group as of yet. There's a lot of people out there that have a ton more experience than I have in talking about dealing with a whole pen full of rams. But they don't make YouTube videos and I do, so you're kind of stuck with me. So I'm gonna tell you at least what I know, what I've experienced so far, and some of the ideas I have, and then we can just kind of go from there. As you can see, I got the guys here, I just fed them. They're all eating. Hey, while, we're, while they're standing here eating, here's the first discussion right there. Feeders. Hay feeders for rams. Real quickly, we're gonna talk about, you can see I've got them. This is one they sell like a tractor supply. It's usually got the aluminum frame underneath it. I took it off. I've got two, one here for them. I've got one for the ewes. I found I had a lot less waste with this, even with the ewes, but the biggest part was with these guys, they all got horns. And when they all have horns, all of a sudden it gets a little bit tougher trying to decide what you can use for feeding in hay feeders. A lot of hay feeders just aren't gonna work for those guys because of all the horns they got. So that's my thing there. So far that seems to work. Yeah, they crawl up inside of it, but uh, they don't waste a ton. And that's your first thing dealing with the pen of rams. You gotta work with the hay feeders. All right, you know what? We're gonna discuss this, we're gonna discuss with rams. It really starts in the next pen over with the little guys. So let's go over there. Now, how you end up with a ram you end up a lot of times determines right here with these guys. How do you start working with these guys? And how you start with them will have a lot to do with what's gonna happen later. Now, the little red guy there, he's friendly. He's pretty friendly compared to the other one. If I wanted to feed him animal crackers out of my hand, I don't think I'd have any problem. He'd do that right up front, no problem. I do it with the ewes all the time, but doing with the ram is another story. Now, I have to admit, I did that with his father. I fed him, that was a little different story, but I fed him animal crackers and we got along fine. The key is, his father didn't live that long. His father only lived to be about a year old. And we're gonna discuss that a little later because that's part of dealing with rams. So, you know, it was probably not a good idea to feed him animal crackers on day one, but he never got old enough to find out why that didn't work. Here's the key dealing with the little ones. Everybody talks about don't bottle feed a ram because you bottle feed a ram and then you're gonna end up with problems later. They get too aggressive and everything that goes with that. And that's all true. But now the one thing you have to remember is, at least the way I looked at it is, yeah, but if I got a ram and I got a bottle feed, I ain't gonna let him die. I am gonna bottle feed him. I had that experience. Oh, when was that? The start, I had that with a black belly lamb at the start of the pandemic. I remember it was then because I named him Cyrus the virus. Um, had to bottle feed him, but here's what I did. And I got him feeding, got him eating on the bottle, had him in the barn separate from everybody else. And I didn't socialize with him. Oh, Cash wants to play with the Rams over here. I didn't socialize with him. I didn't play with him. I didn't do any of that stuff. All I did was feed him. I went out, I fed him, gave him his bottle, left put feed, water, everything else, but that's all I did. No socialization, no playing around, which is what everybody wants to do with a bottle lamp. Seven weeks, moved him to a pen outside where he's next to all the other sheep, fed him another week, kicked the gate, put him in with everybody else and walked away. And that's the way I did that. No playing, no socialization. 
just fed him just the basics. And I know that's kind of tough because he spent seven, eight weeks all by himself. But when I kicked him out, it didn't take much and he incorporated right back in. It seemed like you're fine. I'd like to tell you, okay, a long haul, gee, that's exactly what worked. But to be honest, when they all got weaned, they all got sold. So what really ended up happening on that end, I don't know. But that is the way, if I have to bottle feed a ram lamb, that's the way I'm going to do it. No socialization, no playing around, no petting, no nothing. Here's your bottle. And as soon as I can kick you back out with the others, I'm going to kick you back out. All right, let me, we'll get Cash here. He wants to play with the rams and they want to eat. You want to play with the boys? You want to play with the boys and they won't play with you? Is that it? Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. Let's move over. We'll start talking about the big ones. Hey, before we go any farther, I want to thank all of you. A few videos ago, I mentioned the t-shirt I had that I sell, that I've designed these through Amazon to sell them. I thank you. There's a lot of orders. I do appreciate that. I got a new one. I went more with a patriotic skull this time around with the flag design. Find a link in the description, and I do appreciate it. Let's go back and start talking about them. All right. So what about these guys? First key is, as always with anything with the rams, just never turn your back on them. No matter what you think, you just never know. So you never can trust them. Now, this is where we're going to get to the point where I don't have quite as much expertise as everybody else because all the rams I'm dealing with here, all of these guys, are all about 16, 17 months old. So dealing, these are basically then at this age, I'd say they're more still like they're teenagers. They're not really mature rams. They're more like they're just teenagers. And so accordingly, you got to kind of go with that as to how you treat them. I really don't have the expertise dealing with with older mature rams. And that's where other people would could probably give you more information on that. The only mature ram I ever dealt with was back when I had the mouflons. I had about a four year old mouflon ram, but mouflons are so much different. Where these guys, I can stand right here with these guys and talk to you and they're right here and they're watching what I'm doing and they don't really care. If I was standing here and I had a mouflon, he'd be way out there as far away as he could be. So. I can't really say I've got a lot of expertise with rams that are a little calmer and a little more gentle the way the painted desert are. But again, remember, just because they're calmer and gentler doesn't mean you can turn your back on them. What do rams do as far as your buildings? Well, there you go. That used to be, my son-in-law had these two, had two of them, and they literally, there's a side. The back here, it's used plywood, but I had to put a whole new back on because they literally tore the backs off these things, tore the sides off these things. They're out in another pen here. It was in a pen with like seven or eight rams that my son-in-law had before he got rid of everything. And they literally, they'd fight through the, they'd fight through here. They'd beaten their heads against them all the time. Now I haven't seen that much with these, but rams are gonna be tough on buildings. They're gonna be tough on fences. They're gonna be tough on a little bit of everything. And that's just because that's what rams do. They just act that way. All right, starting to get a little sun. All right, one thing you'll find with rams. They like to fight a lot. Now, and that's, again, these guys still do. The teenagers still fight. The, the older they get, it seems like the less they fight. So maybe the real mature rams, you don't see as much of it. But as you saw at the very start of the video, what's the reason for it? I don't know, they had a disagreement at the dinner table and somebody didn't like the other one. Uh, we have a string of hot days and you get a real cool morning, they're acting squirrely. They'll start acting squirrely and you'll see a little fights here or there. Another one and a time that you really need to be careful, right here, when you're feeding. All right. Especially if you're feeding grain or stuff like that, the hay isn't as bad. I'm feeding grain. I'm going to watch where they are for sure because if there's any going to be any jostling around, or anybody's gonna get a little bit too anxious and wanna get in there, that's the time they're gonna do it. So if you're gonna see some fighting, be careful when you're feeding. That's a good time to be careful about that. The next time, and probably the bigger one is after breeding. All right, we gotta put them back together and that's where we're now gonna get into the one that I had that died. And you know what? I just think I'm gonna hang this thing up while I'm talking to you about that. Now, 
if you are down south and you just leave a ram in with the use 365 days a year, they never come out, you don't have this problem. But up north, we don't like to have lambs in the middle of winter. So basically, as in my case, I put my rams in with the ewes about the end of October. I took them out in December. Hang on, I got to move somebody here. Get out of the way. Get. Don't like them when they're that close to me. Uh, anyway, I put my rams out the end of October, put them in with the ewes, took them back out the end of December. So what happens when you put them in? And that's where we're going to get into long shot, the one I lost, the one I died. I wasn't too sure. First year, I had three rams breeding, so I had three rams I was going to put back together, and they're going to fight. When they've been separated, they've been breeding, now's when the really fighting comes in. So in my case, a lot of people talk about put them in as small areas as you can, and that to me makes perfect sense. The biggest problem you got is when they're backing up, getting a head start, running with each other, hitting them head on. Yeah, I'm going to check behind me once in a while. Uh, that's when you're going to have problems. So if you keep them in a real small space, you shouldn't have that problem. So here's what I did. There's my three rams. I put them in the catch pin. They had about a 12 by 15 or 12 by 9 pin is where they were in. And I put tubs in there and stuff that couldn't get a run and start. And that worked pretty good at the start. My problem was Longshot decided to quit. Now, all summer long, Longshot wanted to pick fights with everybody, especially Stu. He would pick fights with Stu all the time out here in the pasture and stuff. Well, now we put them in here. They're in there for about an hour, a half hour, and they fight pretty good. And Longshot decides, okay, I'm done. I quit. And Stu thought, no, I'm sorry. This ain't going to cut it, buddy. You got me all summer. We ain't stopping now. And Stu kept it up. So I kind of kept an eye. I have cameras. I could watch them. Made sure what was happening. Uh, they kind of quit for a while. I thought it was going to be okay. But then they started up again, and now Stoney decided, hey, I'm going to take part in this. So now it's two on one. And it didn't take long, and I caught that. I got out there. I pulled long shot out. I had no idea what I was going to do. Once I take him out, how are you, you going to put him back? Well, it didn't make any difference. They beat him up pretty good in that time they had. And that's where your key is when you've got multiple rams. Like It's not the head-to-head. -head. You, can, you can break a horn, and you can have a problem head-to-head. -head. The biggest problem is... When you, one's going head to head and the other one's coming in from the side, that's where you can have your problem. Now you start getting broken legs, broken ribs, you can get damage like that. Well, long shot came out of there like a little old man, kind of all beat up. And to be honest with you, we went three or four weeks and I tried and he had enough internal injuries. It wasn't going to work. I eventually had to put him down. So that's how I lost him. Needless to say, I didn't care much for Stu for a while after that because that was my favorite ram. But I still had that deal. I still had Stu and Stoney, and they had to go in with those other four. I had to put them in. So here we go. I put them together. Only this time I decided we're moving outside. Talked to some other people and I said, you've got to have a way to get, get away from them. When one wants to quit, he's got to be able to run away. And I thought, yeah, I can see that too now. So here we go. I put them back together, and they went at it. And uh, you can see... They, was, they went through it pretty good, and eventually we ended up with a little blood out there, too, part of what you're going to get. But that's what ended up having to be done. They fought out pretty good for a while. Somebody was able to run away. They eventually got done, and they're up. Now, start all over. It's going to happen all over again. Every time you put them back together, you're going to have that problem. So how am I going to do it this year? Well, this year, it's going to be different. I will have the four will be gone. I will have Stoney and Stu. And I will have Lomax and Greystone, the two small ones. I'm keeping four rams, and I'm breeding all four of them. They're all four going to be bred. So I'm going to put Stoney and Stu back together in the small area. I'm going to give them a half hour, 45 minutes in there. Let them fight it out just a little bit. And then I'm kicking them out to a big pen. They're going to go out in a big pen, and I will probably put them. Let me take this off real quick. I will probably put them in this pen right here but I'll open the pasture gate and give them the whole pasture. Somebody wants to get away, they can go out there. Meanwhile, Greystone and Lomax, I'm going to put those two together. I'll put them together, I'll give them a little time to fight it out, and then they're going to go back in their pen and have the big pasture where somebody can run away from somebody else. Is that the right way to do it? I don't know, but that's the way I'm going to do it this year. The way I did it last year didn't work. 
So, and it could have worked. It was just, you know, who knows? You could do that 10 times and nine out of 10, it should have worked. That's the way I'm gonna set it up this year. I'm gonna give them then a few weeks to let the testosterone go down after all the breeding, let them mellow out just a little bit. And then probably after about three weeks of being that way, all these, the Lomax and Greystone are gonna go in with the big rams that are left. I can't, I'm not gonna keep them separated forever. So, but I think the little guys, the little guys are gonna, they're gonna wanna fight. I mean, come here, take a look at here. If you notice, I got two fences here now. I've had to put a separator fence in. And you can see there's just a gap of a few feet. Why? Because Greystone wanted to fight all these guys through the fence. He was trying to fight them through the fence all the time. So I had to put a separator fence in. And come breeding season, you have to have that too because they will try to fight through the fence. But anyway, I'll put them together. That's the way I'm gonna do them. We'll hope for the best, you know, but it is what it is when you're dealing with rams. Well, as it says, they're just different than ewes. They got different problems that you associate with it. All right, hey, if you got any questions, leave me a comment. If you would, I'll answer. Leave me an email if, you, if I have, if there's something else about rams you want that I didn't cover, let me know, I'd be glad to. But they're fun to have, but they're a little more of a challenge than the ewes. They'll, they'll give you a few more problems that the ewes won't give you. All right, I got some ideas down the line. I don't know if I'll have a video next week. We'll see what's coming up. I got, I'm getting real close to getting my hay supply in. I get that in. And then at that time, we probably somewhere along that we'll be talking about how to figure out how much hay you need to get you through the winter. Catch you next time.